would like to go more deep down in ICF ACC because this program specifically we are talking about ICF ACC offerings. Mm -hmm. So what is the overall, you know, uh, procedure to get this credential? Okay. So as I mentioned, there's a few things you need in place. So the very first thing you need in place is to have a minimum of 60 hours, six zero hours of accredited coach training. It's got to be accredited coach training. It can't just be any training. So the first thing to do is to get um, the 60 hours of accredited coach training. The second thing then is you need 10 hours of being mentored by an accredited coach. Um, so you need a minimum of 10 hours of mentoring and the mentoring really just helps you to enhance your understanding of the competencies, how to use them, and also, you know, what's personal to you and how do you become the best coach that you can be. That's the purpose of the mentoring. So 60 hours of training, accredited training, 10 hours of mentoring with a certified coach, and then you need to go out there and coach. And I say to coaches when they finish their training, focus on that. You know, go out there and coach. And so you need to have a minimum of 100 hours of actual coaching experience before you can uh, go for your associate certified coach credential. And, and so that means that you need to have at least uh, eight clients. So you would look for eight clients. If you're internal in an organization, perhaps you're doing talent management and you would, you would get eight clients there. Or perhaps you are um, looking at building your own private practice um, and then you would look for a minimum of eight clients because generally we do uh, about 12 sessions per client. That would be a series that you offer. So if you can look at eight clients would be 96 hours. You would just need to make up another four so the hundred hours maybe sounds a lot but if you look at it by saying you know at the end of the day you need eight coaching clients um maybe nine just to make up the extra few hours and your training doesn't expire so you know once you've finished your accredited coach training then your opportunity is to start coaching and, um, you know, through that coaching, you start uh, making sure that you've logged those hours. So we keep a record of our hours as coaches. So if anybody asks me, I can tell them how many clients I've had, how many hours that I have personally coached. You keep that going. And so when you've got um, done, completed your training successfully, you've got your mentoring and you've got your 100 hours, you also need to do a formal assessment, which can be part of the training. So if it's a level one program um, such as the program we offer you then do your formal assessment as part of your training um, and you are assessed against the competencies to make sure that you're able to coach at the right level of what the ISF is looking for um, and then there's a knowledge assessment for me the knowledge assessment is the easiest part okay because <laughs> it focuses on asking questions around the, the eight competencies so 60 hours of training accredited training 10 hours of mentoring, 100 hours of being a coach, of actually being a coach, which is what you are trained for. Um, and then uh, you would apply and do a knowledge assessment. 